Hello, this is another Zwobot tutorial and in this video I'm going to be talking about the video rack modules. What these allow you to do is quickly load a video into your Zwobot player with the click of a button so it saves you having to browse through folders and drag and drop videos in because when you're in the middle of a live set that's going to distract you from everything. There's two of them, one's just called Rack, one is called Rack Quick Set. So I'm just going to look at the Rack one to begin with, and I'm going to drop it in here. I've currently got my player and a monitor loaded into a MIDI channel. I like to have the racks before the player because that's where you're loading the videos onto, so it makes sense to have them together. So here you've got 21 slots for videos. So if you've got a set with so I want to have these five videos here and I want to use them throughout my set in advance. I can just drag and drop them into here like this. Oh, there we go. And then during the live set, if I want to load them into my player, all I've got to do is click the A button to load it into the A deck or the B button to load it into the B deck. You can also drop folders into the rack module here. So if I were to drop this folder, just drag and drop it from my Windows Explorer onto a slot, it's now put all the videos within that folder in there. So if I load it into deck B, for example, you'll notice it's put all of those videos onto deck B. So if you want to load up a whole bunch of videos instead of just one at a time, you can do it that way. Underneath the video slots, you've got these slots for 3D files and alpha files. So the 3D files will work with the 3D effects module, which is here. And the alpha files will work with the alpha extension. Now I'm going to do separate videos on those, so I'm not going to talk about them right now, but just know that there are slots for those files here as well. Clear Zwobot channel, that will clear whatever video is currently loaded into the decks. So if I click that, I've now cleared those. Open and save. So save will save this as a template. So let's say I want to use these five video files in 10 different live sets and they're all separate projects. You don't want to have to be dragging and dropping them in for every single one of those projects. So you can do it once. And then if you click save, I can just save this as a JSON file. And then if I were to delete this and bring it back in. So it's blank, but instead of having to load them all up again, I can just go to open, open that file, and then it loads them all back in. So that's quite handy if you've got the same set of videos that you want to use in multiple projects, or if you just want to back it up just in case something happens and you lose it. And delete all entries will remove everything that's loaded. So if you click that, it'll delete everything. And to delete a single file, you just click where the number is, it'll change to an X when you hover over it and click that and that'll go. So that's everything with the standard rack module. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to look at the quick set one, which has a few more interesting features we can use. So here's the slots for the quick set. It looks a bit different to the normal rack. Let's just load some videos in here. It's so the same thing where you drag and drop them in. So these buttons will decide which deck they get loaded into. The way you load them in is just by clicking them. So if I click this now, because A is selected, it's going to go into the A deck. But if I select B and I click it, it goes to the B deck. Here you've got a button to control whether it plays on trigger mode or gate mode. So trigger mode, it'll just play as soon as you click it. Whereas gate mode, it'll only play while you're holding it down. So I'm holding it down, it's playing as soon as I let go. It stops and goes back to the start. D and D stands for drag and drop, and that will allow you to drag and drop these videos into different slots. Because if that's not highlighted, you can't do that because as soon as you click it, it's just going to start playing. 
So if you want to move them, you have to click that, move it, and then you can turn it off. Delete, when you highlight that, it'll bring up these X's, which will allow you to delete a file if you want to use a different one. You can see that there's notes on each of these slots, and that's because you can trigger each of these slots using MIDI notes if you don't want to do it manually, which can be quite interesting. This highlight button will highlight the notes because when that's turned off, anything that's got a video on it, you can't see what note that corresponds to. So this can be quite handy to turn it on. So what I'm gonna try and do here is have a video be triggered by a kick drum and then a different video be triggered by a snare. So every time a kick drum hits, it's gonna play one video. Every time a snare hits, it's gonna play a different video. So let's just stop that. I'm only gonna use the A deck for this. And let's just drag these in. And I'm only gonna use two because I just want one for the kick, one for the snare. So there we go. Okay, so let's load a drum kit into this channel. I'm just gonna use a classic 808. I'm gonna minimize that. And let's just use one of the stock clips. Okay, so if I look at this MIDI clip, I can see that the kick is C1. However, if I go back here, the lowest that this goes is C2. So I can't have a video be triggered by a C1 MIDI note. So I've got a problem. So what I'm gonna do, instead of having the drums on this channel, I'm going to load them into a separate MIDI channel. And then I'm going to duplicate this MIDI clip onto there. Just turn this down again. So I've got the MIDI clip on this channel instead now, but obviously this is only going to respond to the MIDI clip that's on this channel, not this one. So what I have to do, I've got the same MIDI clip here, but it's on C1, but because now the drums are coming from this channel, I can shift this up an octave and it doesn't matter. So now the kick is corresponding with this channel's C2 notes. And the snare is this seconds note. So I wanna keep that. And these ones I can delete, I don't need these because I'm only wanting to trigger on the kick and the snare notes. So these will now correspond with the actual kick and the snare. And because I've moved them up an octave, they are going to correspond with these. Although this one needs to move because it's D2 and this is on C sharp two. So I'm gonna highlight this drag and drop and shift it over to D2. So now if I were to just play this, we'll see the videos are getting triggered. This one's not actually a video, it's an image, but that's fine. Okay, but we've got no drums. However, if we play these in sync, these video triggers are gonna sync up with the kick and the snare on here. Okay, let's load an actual video in there to make it a bit more exciting. Let's go back to my robot suite and let's put in one of these blops. There we go. And let's see what that is. Cool. And just to make it more interesting, I could put the kaleidoscope on. Let's see what some of these effects look like. I could even blend it with the video B. It's getting a bit too psychedelic acid -y for my tastes at the moment. Yeah, I'll just switch that off, of course now. Can put it in black and white. Okay. So that's how you can sync your videos up with individual parts of a MIDI clip. And you can get as complex with this as you wanted. So if I wanted to have a different video, let's just turn the fold off. Say I don't want the same video triggered with every kick. I could move 
this note, which corresponds to the kick, up to an E. I could move this one up to a D sharp. Let's make this one a C sharp. And now I can load different videos in to, I've forgotten what those notes were. I need one on C sharp, one on D sharp, one on E. C sharp, D sharp, and E. So let's put one on D sharp, one on C sharp. That's the same one I've already got. One on the E, there we go. And I'll turn that effect off just so we can see it better. So that just adds a bit more variety. And if you wanted to get really crazy, you could program in the, um, the hi-hats as well, or in this case, the maracas. I could copy and paste that in. I could put it on an F2. Oh, so automatically put it where it was originally. Let's put it, let's put it a bit higher. Let's put it on A2. And let's bring a different video in. There we go. And because let's say I don't want it to always be going back to that first frame every time, what I can do is use this beat function. If I set that to one note and I set this to random frame, now every note in the Ableton project is going to move this to a different frame, move all of these videos to a different frame. So that means instead of it always going back to the first frame, it's going to jump to a random frame. So it should just add a bit of variety. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So you can see it's going to different frames instead of always going back to the start. It's jumping around a bit more. Now, these videos are all very short. So even though it's going to different frames, there's still not a whole lot of variety there. If you had a longer video, it would give that variety. The jump button, what that will do is jump in this display to whichever video has just been triggered. So if I simplify this a bit, and I just have this go to A2. Every time that A2 note triggers, you'll notice in this display, it'll jump to here if I've got this turned on. So if I turn it off first, I hit play. This isn't moving at all. Whereas if I highlight jump, see it jumped up to that one when it triggered it. And I'm not doing that, that's happening automatically. So it just allows you to keep track of which clip is being triggered. Okay, that's everything related to the rack modules. And keep an eye on the channel for some more Zoobot tutorials coming soon.